Hello again, everyone. I am out here for another plant ID hike, uh, spring ephemerals number three. Uh, today I am in at the very northern edge of Monroe County um, at a place called Stemler Caves Nature Preserve. It is owned by the state of Illinois and it being a nature preserve, meaning that it has the highest level of protection uh, within the state of Illinois. Uh, so you cannot uh, collect things from here. Um, you're supposed to have minimal impact to this area. Uh, you know, no ATVs or mountain biking, anything like that allowed. Um, I think it's about a two or three mile trail system here uh, through a really co cool area that has karst topography and sinkholes. Um, that just means that the bedrock in this area is limestone, which is a porous rock, meaning that allows water to drain through it. The limestone can dissolve uh, and crack, and that causes rapid movement of water through um, some of those spots, and then, then erodes all of the soil as well, so you get sinkholes created. Um, and the reason that happens in this area is because there is a, a cave network, which is um, the karst area below here that's called uh, Stemler Cave, hence the name of the nature preserve. So all of the sinkholes in this area and the water drains um, down into Stemler Cave. Uh, it makes some really cool geography. You get some cool flora because of it. Uh, because you get these highly erosive areas into the sinkholes um, and there's a lot of moisture in those areas. Sometimes they hold a lot of water even year round. Um, so you have sinkhole ponds, which are especially neat. Uh, we also have upland and music woods here, Oak Hickory dominated. Uh, it is Definitely overtaken with invasive species, of course, but there's a lot of work being put in to remove things like uh, bush honeysuckle and Japanese honeysuckle here, uh, multi-flora rose. Um, so there's some work being done. That's a pretty big area, uh, so there's a lot more that still needs to be done. Um, so we're gonna go out on a hike here, catch some of the end of season spring ephemerals. I believe today is April 19th. So we're getting to the end of the spring ephemeral season. It's quick, it's fleeting. Um, but we'll see some cool stuff out here. And I believe I'm standing at the top of a sinkhole that's actually uh, potentially one of the entrances into Stemler Cave. I'm not gonna test it out. I'm not much of a caving person, but you can see behind me that down there you can see some exposed rock um, and that probably drops down into the cave system it's pretty neat that's a good 15 feet below me and I definitely cannot see the bottom uh, once you do reach the bedrock down there so that's one of those things that makes this area really really unique uh, and real exciting so we are gonna go head out on our hike now Here I have a scenario for you um, in which maybe people don't expect to see poison ivy growing. A lot of people think of it just as a vine growing up a tree or a shrub. Um, but this is basically a large area of stems sticking out of the ground of poison ivy. You can see the uh, the small leaves of three. They're often that pinkish red color in the springtime. And if you, this is now the time you can really tell just how fuzzy they actually are. Um, and they can just grow on singular stems sticking out of the ground. You may see occasional hairs sticking out, which we think of like the hairy vines with poison ivy. Um, but this is an area that is just covered 
with them. <laughs> uh, it's all about waist high too. So in the winter time, it just looks like maybe a bunch of tree seedlings sticking out of the ground. Um, if you don't recognize the, the buds, uh, in the springs when it becomes quite noticeable, um, so tread lightly in those areas, it'll get you. All right, I'm stopping here alongside the trail. Um, my attention was caught by a pretty cool shrub uh, that at first glances might look quite a bit like poison ivy to you. And in fact, it's kind of a relative of poison ivy. It's called uh, Rus aromatica, which is fragrant sumac. Um, it has leaves of three, sure enough, and it has that reddish color in the spring, just like poison ivy does. But this is, in fact, a woody shrub, you can see. Um, and it kind of will have a dense growth pattern. This one's a little scrawny, but in full sun it does really well. Um, actually makes a really good landscaping plant. Um, does produce berries. I believe they're red berries where poison ivy has white berries. Uh, and uh, that's a little bit later in the growing season. But this caught my attention. You don't see it super commonly. Uh, shrubs generally don't do well in our modern woodlands uh, because they do not have enough light openings for them. Uh, and they really get taken over by the honeysuckle easily. So that's a cool one to spy. Uh, we have a patch of May apples here, which we've talked about before. And because this spot is quite shady, uh, none of them are actually in bloom. So we won't get to see those today. But I was over here looking for some May apple blooms and found a true special treat. Uh, I even had to make sure that no one was around me on the trail before I showed you. Uh, but probably the most famous wild plant in America, wild ginseng, I spotted here um, somewhat along the trail. Um, it usually needs some really high quality music woods. Um, which I would say it does have in this area, especially since there's no honeysuckle. But we notice the five leaflets on these small petioles or stalks. Uh, it's kind of a reddish brown colored stem. And there's a few here. These ones are just starting to unfurl and open up. Um, it's not yet time for them to be blooming but this is what people dig the roots for. Um, and you can get a decent um, price for the roots, but you really need large patches of it. I don't think uh, Stemler Cave has <laughs> anything like you would want to be uh, digging for. You'd end up with very small quantities and would make essentially no money. Um, but it's really cool. It's a really high quality species. It's an indicator of a good habitat. And that was a really fun find right now. Unfortunately, it's not yet in bloom, but maybe we'll catch it later on. Okay, out in the woods there, you can see some large white flowers about halfway up the trees. Um, that is actually a flowering tree species that I wanted to take advantage of a good opportunity to show you. We have one here growing on the slope and so I am able to get close enough to its flowers that are very beautiful. This is a species known as flowering dogwood. It is an understory tree meaning that it stays pretty small um, it can get pretty tall and spindly in the woods. A lot of people have these in their landscaping though and they grow uh, more short and squat. Um, but this is a gorgeous species that blooms in the springtime with these large white flowers. Uh, its Latin name is Cornus Florida. Uh, Florida is just normal spelling like the state but I always feel like I have to say it fancy. Um, so this is a cool species. 
what's neat about it actually is at the center there you can see those greenish orange bulblets those are the actual flowers of the species these four white large petals that you're seeing actually are not flower petals they are the bracts to the flowers they're a specialized bract that are designed to help pull in uh, the tree's pollinators um, so this one actually is not yet in bloom those bracts are waiting to open and when they do it'll be in bloom um, it's a neat species it blooms for just a short while in April uh, you probably have two three weeks to catch it and then it is gone uh, a way to identify it first of all one way is by the bark it has a really distinctive I don't know if we can see in the distance there um, its bark kind of looks like alligator skin a little bit. It's like a dark brown color. Often has a good bit of moss growing on it. But it is the one right there. But there is a trick known as the dogwood trick with its leaves. When you only have leaves remaining and the flowers are all gone. If I can get this to focus. If you break the leaf gently and you slowly pull it apart, you will see that leaf is entirely broken, but somehow it's hanging on. It has these small filaments in the veins, and you could probably see them even that help to make it look like uh, the bottom part of the leaf is floating right now, even though it's totally broken off. So that's kind of like the dogwood trick to identify if it's a flowering dogwood species. So that's a cool one to try out and impress your friends and family with. I'm gonna hop over here to crawl through some poison ivy to get to another tree species. Uh, spider web. Uh, this one here is another understory tree species known as the Eastern Redbud, and it is also in bloom. You probably see these quite a bit. They have these pinkish purple flowers in the springtime, same time as the flowering dogwood. Really pretty pea looking flowers. It's a member of the Fab Fabaceae family, so the pea family. Um, and they're pretty neat. Also an understory tree. You can see more purple blooms right here. So that is Eastern Redbud. All right, I'm going to change it up a little bit and actually show you a grass species. Uh, most of them don't have their flowers or seed heads to them yet, so they can be difficult to identify. Uh, but this one, lucky for me, has last year's seed heads still remaining. Uh, most of the seeds have already vacated, but it has the awns left. These are the spiky things here, uh, and that makes it really easy to identify. So this is a grass known as uh, Canada Wild Rye, which is an Elemis species. It has this nice medium green leaf color to it. It gets much taller than this is right now. This is just its spring growth. Um, it could easily get to be a good three, three feet tall, especially in the sunlight. This one I can tell was quite a bit shorter because we're in the woods here. Um, one of the big identifying features of grasses is actually their ligule, which is where the grass blade meets the actual stem of the grass. So this one has a non-hairy ligule that's kind of like a brownish red color and wraps around the stem there. That's one way to identify it. Uh, but it's pretty easy to identify when you're looking at these seed heads. Uh, they got a nice droop to them. They stand taller than the actual grass blades themselves. Uh, they'll be more of a greenish color when the when it's technically flowering um, and even as the seeds just starting to ripen this is old so it's a pretty straw colored seed head right now they're large they're the length of my finger so um, that's a good native species it's a grass difficult to find in the woods uh, unless there's enough light which most of our woods don't have the too much closure of the overstory, but this one here is Canada Wild Rye. Alright, 
I found a new fern species that I'm going to introduce you to. You can say hello to the Jack in the Pulpit flower again with his spathe and spadex. Uh, but this is the fern over here. It's this really frilly looking one. He's going around this log. It has a very lacy looking leaf to it. Uh, it's very pretty. It's a very light green color. It stays low to the ground. Uh, maybe just six or eight inches. It can kind of act almost like a ground cover in some really high quality areas. It's a very common fern known by the name Fragile Fern. Um, never gets woody. It always has these very fleshy stems. Uh, you could probably find it just about everywhere within our region, both Illinois and Missouri. Uh, it's very pretty, low growing. You'll find it in the same places that you'll find Christmas fern uh, and sensitive fern. Uh, this one's on a hill slope here. In fact, I can see some Christmas fern right over there. Uh, so it's growing alongside that. Nice to see, it's a fun fern. It acts as a nice ground cover. So I have another species here for you. This one's called wild geranium. Uh, this is related to the geranium species that we're used to in hanging baskets. Uh, however, this is just the wild species. This one acts more like a ground cover actually. You can see some of its palmate shaped leaves around. It has a beautiful pinkish purple colored flower. Um, Getting close there with some yellow stamens. It's quite nice. Um, you can see a carpet kind of like low-lying areas, floodplain areas. Um, it's very pretty. It doesn't, it's not ever very aggressive, uh, but it shows up. Oh, my dog got into this picture. Um, <laughs> it shows up in good, uh, good, good amounts in areas that it likes, and it's really quite pretty. Um, Another one I've seen that I've been wanting to point out to you, uh, wouldn't consider it a spring ephemeral. Uh, it is a native, it's this yellow flowering plant here. This one goes by the name Pacara glabella. Uh, used to be called Senecio, uh, but now it's Pacara. Um, and it is, I believe a common name for it is golden ragwort. You see it really often along roadsides. It has this crazy stem that looks, <laughs> my dog keeps wanting to be on screen, um, that looks almost celery-like and fleshy. Uh, and it's quite easy to snap and you can tell there's a lot of juices in there. Uh, it has very interesting shaped leaves to it. And it's pretty distinctive by how tall it is. It grows quite fast. Uh, it's a member of the aster family, so it has ray and disc flowers. You could see the ray flowers around the outside, the larger colored petals, and then the inside, all that, uh, the tiny yellow dots, those are the disc flowers there. So that's pretty uh, typical of the aster family. So that's Pacara glabella, uh, golden ragwort, I believe. We have some more May apples here, but of course none of them are in bloom. I'm not sure why I've had such bad luck at finding you all uh, blooms of the May apple. If we move up here, we can see we can see more of the wild geranium acting kind of as a ground cover. It's quite nice. All right, I managed to land a spot with two uh, species that are flowering or either almost in flower. Uh, one of them I've talked about before, and it's this tall plant uh, called Solomon Seal. It's uh, Polygonatum commutatum. Um, this one is almost in flower. You can see these, hopefully you can see these tiny little uh, florets. Oop, can't get it to focus on them. They're so tiny. Uh, there we go. So these are these will soon be opening into the flower. So they hang 
um, from the leaf margin, so where the where the leaf is meeting the stem, they hang down below the droop of the plant. Uh, they bloom with a small white flower. It's really pretty. Um, they're these big arching plants and they'll de eventually develop berries in place of those flowers. Uh, so they're pretty unique looking. They're very pale green color, very, everything about it feels very fragile, um, malleable. It's not, you know, for as tall as they all are, they don't have a woody stem. So that's pretty cool. They are not technically a spring ephemeral. Um, their fruit will ripen through the summer. I'd say midsummer. it's probably ripened. So the plant persists despite um, actually blooming in the springtime. But that doesn't completely disappear. So that does not make it a spring ephemeral. Uh, another one we have is a spring bloomer. Uh, this one's got a much smaller stature to it. It's, um, maybe 12 inches tall, and that might be about all I ever see them get. Uh, this one's called Osmorzia claytonii, uh, which is anise root. So this one's blooming right now. And it has these umbels. You can see all these flowers on stalks here. And then it has umbelettes, where at each one there's a whole nother set of flowers. Uh, so that's called a compound umbel. Uh, and it's just that it describes the type of flower that we have, the flower shape that we have. Uh, this, this has compound leaves as well. So this whole thing here is a leaf and then we have individual leaflets on the plant. Um, and this one's called Sweet Sicily. It's related to another native uh, plant that we know as anise root. And it has that pretty distinctive smell to it, the anise root, opposed to this one, the uh, sweet sisley. The anise root does have a much stronger scent to it, um, but this one does as well. And so it's a pretty one. It has these white, pretty frilly looking flowers and the plant's a low stature. Um, it's hard to see right now, it's a little bit crowded, but it ends up looking really nice. Um, it's just a very attractive plant. Uh, growing on the floor, forest floor. Here's another one here, but it's crowded also. Um, but it's nice. Sweet Sicily. Alright, that's the end of my plant ID hike at Stemler Cave Nature Preserves. Uh, this might be the last spring ephemeral hike. We'll have to move on to a new topic likely next go around. I'm standing here in front of this massive red oak tree that I found out near one of the sinkhole ponds. So it's a pretty cool spot to come check out, see some really nice trees, some good ground flora, uh, and go for a few mile hike. See you next time. Bye.